The Scarecrow of Oz. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Chapter 19. Narrated by Lucy Burgoyne. The Scarecrow of Oz by L. Frank Baum. The Conquest of the Witch. Now, as soon as the conquest of King Cruel had taken place, one of the orcs had been dispatched to Pon's house with the joyful news. At once Gloria and Pon and Trot and Button Bright hastened toward the castle. They were somewhat surprised by the sight that met their eyes, for there was the Scarecrow, Crown King, and all the people kneeling humbly before him. So they likewise bowed low to the new ruler and then stood beside the throne. Cap'n Bill, as the grey grasshopper, was still perched upon Trot's shoulder, but now he hopped to the shoulder of the scarecrow and whispered into the painted ear. I thought Gloria was to be queen of Jinxland. The scarecrow shook his head. Not yet. He answered. No queen with a frozen heart is fit to rule any country. Then he turned to his new friend, the orc, who was strutting about, very proud of what he had done, and said, Do you suppose you or your followers could find old Blinky the witch? Where is she? asked the orc. Somewhere in Jinxland, I'm sure. Then, said the orc, we shall certainly be able to find her. It will give me great pleasure, declared the Scarecrow. When you have found her, bring her here to me, and I will then decide what to do with her. The Orc called his followers together and spoke a few words to them in a low tone. A moment after they rose into the air, so suddenly that the Scarecrow, who was very light in weight, was blown quite out of his throne and into the arms of Pon, who replaced him carefully upon his seat. There was an eddy of dust and ashes too, and the grasshopper only saved himself from being whirled into the crowd of people by jumping into a tree, from where a series of hops soon brought him back to Trot's shoulder again. The orcs were quite out of sight by this time, so the scarecrow made a speech to the people and presented Gloria to them, whom they knew well already and were fond of, but not all of them knew of her frozen heart. And when the scarecrow related the story of the wicked witch's misdeeds, which had been encouraged and paid for by cruel and googly goo, the people were very indignant. Meantime, the fifty orcs had scattered all over Jinx land, which is not a very big country, and their sharp eyes were peering into every valley and grove and gully. Finally one of them spied a pair of heels sticking out from underneath some bushes, and with a shrill whistle to warn his comrades that the witch was found, the orc flew down and dragged old Blinky from her hiding place. Then two or three of the orcs seized the clothing of the wicked woman in their strong claws and, lifting her high in the air, where she struggled and screamed to no avail, they flew with her straight to the royal castle and set her down before the throne of the scarecrow. Good! exclaimed the straw man, nodding his stuffed head with satisfaction. Now we can proceed to business. Mistress Witch, I am obliged to request, gently but firmly, that you undo all the wrongs you have done by means of your witchcraft. Puh! cried old Blinky in a scornful voice. I defy you all. By my magic powers I can turn you all into pigs rooting in the mud. And I'll do it if you're not careful. I think you are mistaken about that, 
said the scarecrow, and rising from his throne, he walked with wobbling steps to the side of the wicked witch. Before I left the land of Oz, Glinda, the royal sorceress, gave me a box, which I was not to open except in an emergency. But I feel pretty sure that this occasion is an emergency. Don't you, Trot? He asked, turning toward the little girl. Why, we've got to do something, replied Trot seriously. Things seem in an awful muddle here just now, and it'll be worse if we don't stop this witch from doing more harm to people. That is my idea exactly, said the scarecrow, and taking a small box from his pocket, he opened the cover and tossed the contents toward Blinky. The old woman shrank back, pale and trembling, as a fine white dust settled all about her. Under its influence, she seemed, to the eyes of all observers, to shrivel and grow smaller. Oh dear, oh dear! She wailed, wringing her hands in fear. Haven't you the antidote, Scarecrow? Did the great sorceress give you another box? She did, answered the Scarecrow. Then give it to me, quick! pleaded the witch. Give it to me! You ask me to. You will do what I ask first, declared the scarecrow firmly. The witch was shriveling and growing smaller every moment. Be quick, then, she cried. Tell me what I must do and let me do it, or it will be too late. You made Trot's friend, Captain Bill, a grasshopper. I command you to give him back his proper form again said the scarecrow. Where is he? Where's the grasshopper? Quick, quick! She screamed. Cap'n Bill, who had been deeply interested in this conversation, gave a great leap from Trot's shoulder and landed on that of the scarecrow. Blinky saw him alight and at once began to make magic passes and to mumble magic incantations. She was in a desperate hurry, knowing that she had no time to waste, and the grasshopper was so suddenly transformed into the old sailor man, Cap'n Bill, that he had no opportunity to jump off the scarecrow's shoulder. So his great weight bore the stuffed scarecrow to the ground. No harm was done, however, and the straw man got up and brushed the dust from his clothes, while Trot delightedly embraced Cap'n Bill. The other box! Quick! Give me the other box! begged Blinky, who had now shrunk to half her former size. Not yet, said the Scarecrow. You must first melt Princess Gloria's frozen heart. asserted the witch, in an agony of fear, for still she was growing smaller. You must, declared the scarecrow firmly. The witch cast a shrewd look at him and saw that he meant it, so she began dancing around Gloria in a frantic manner. The princess looked coldly on, as if not at all interested in the proceedings while Blinky tore a handful of hair from her own head and ripped a strip of cloth from the bottom of her gown. Then the witch sunk upon her knees, took a purple powder from her black bag, and sprinkled it over the hair and cloth. I hate to do it! I hate to do it! She wailed. For there is no more of this magic compound in all the world! But I must sacrifice it to save my own life. A match! Give me a match, quick! And panting from lack of breath, she gazed imploringly from one to another. Cap'n Bill was the only one who had a match, but he lost no time in handing it to Blinky, who quickly set fire to the hair and the cloth and the purple powder. 
At once a purple cloud enveloped Gloria, and this gradually turned to a rosy pink color, brilliant and quite transparent. Through the rosy cloud they could all see the beautiful princess, standing proud and erect. Then her heart became visible, at first frosted with ice, but slowly growing brighter and warmer until all the frost had disappeared and it was beating as softly and regularly as any other heart. And now the cloud dispersed and disclosed Gloria, her face suffused with joy, smiling tenderly upon the friends who were grouped about her. Paul Pon stepped forward, timidly fearing a repulse, but with pleading eyes and arms fondly outstretched toward his former sweetheart and the princess saw him, and her sweet face lightened with a radiant smile. Without an instant's hesitation, she threw herself into Pond's arms, and this reunion of two loving hearts was so affecting that the people turned away and lowered their eyes so as not to mar the sacred joy of the faithful lovers. But Blinky's small voice was shouting to the scarecrow for help. The antidote! She screamed. Give me the other box, quick! The scarecrow looked at the witch with his quaint, painted eyes and saw that she was now no taller than his knee. So he took from his pocket the second box and scattered its contents on Blinky. She ceased to grow any smaller but she could never regain her former size, and this the wicked old woman well knew. She did not know, however, that the second powder had destroyed all her power to work magic, and seeking to be revenged upon the scarecrow and his friends, she at once began to mumble a charm so terrible in its effect that it would have destroyed half the population of Jinxland had it worked. But it did not work at all, to the amazement of old Blinky. And by this time the scarecrow noticed what the little witch was trying to do, and said to her, Go home, Blinky, and behave yourself. You are no longer a witch, but an ordinary old woman, and since you are powerless to do more evil, I advise you to try to do some good in the world. Believe me, it is more fun to accomplish a good act than an evil one, as you will discover when once you have tried it. But Blinky was at that moment filled with grief and chagrin at losing her magic powers. She started away toward her home, sobbing and bewailing her fate, and not one who saw her go was at all sorry for her. End of chapter 19